Yes. Yes, we were watching that. We were watching that. We're going to... We, well, he denied it, so we'll see what they're planning to do. All right, here we are tonight, ready to uh, worship and pray. Whether you're here or you're watching online, whether it's right now or it's later, <laughs> come and join with us. Let us know you're connecting. Let's engage tonight. Spend time in his presence. Bring glory to his name. He's worthy. Worthy Jesus. Thank you. Lord, I lift your name on high. This is an old one. is 
one thing I ask and I would see to see
upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you with you, with you is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going you for being here with us tonight as we lift our voices we just know your presence sense your presence surround us we just pour out our worship to you pour out our song to you
sing that again. There's a stirring in my soul. life. 
influence over our nation right now. We need you. As a president, when he is in diminished capacity, when he can't even remember his son's date of death or time of death 
or the time frame of his presidency, vice presidency. Oh God, it's time. We deserve better as a nation, God. We deserve the right thing. We deserve the truth. We deserve the real in Jesus' name. I'm just going to open it up right here for prayer. If you've got something to proclaim or decree along this line, I think this is so important. Just, if you come up here and grab the mic, just jump right into prayer. Don't go into a story time or, or talking about something. Just jump right into prayer, please. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, because the number, what Pastor just said, 2824. Yes. If you put those numbers together, it's a double eight. Eight is the, a new beginning. Jesus. Lord, I thank you because I know, Lord God, that with one, it's going to be a new beginning for the success of what you've called this country to be. Yes. Yes. And his name is Donald Trump. And I know the other eight is the beginning of the downfall yes. for the lies and the deceit that has come forth in this last three years, three and a half years. God, I know it's over, but God, I thank you because I believe that it's just beginning in Jesus' yes. name. Yes, that's right. That's right, exactly. The floodgates are open. Things are shifting and changing. We just declare that. It's not just going to be status quo. They can't cover this up. They can't sweep it under the rug. They can't just dismiss it. They can't lie about what, what their own special prosecutor said, which is what Joe Biden did over the air tonight. He lied about what he said in his report several times. It was very clear. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, I say it will not stand. This cannot stand. I call on the courts of heaven. I call on justice tonight in Jesus' name. I call on the gavel of justice to fall and the truth to explode and come out in Jesus' name. It's time for a turnover. It's time for a turnaround. Yes. Come on. Do it. <laughs> Oh, Lord, we need you. You're our defense, Father God. We just um, cry out right now, Lord, for supernatural defenses all around our nation and, our, and everything that concerns our national security right now, Lord, as we're watching the unfolding and the revealing of who is sitting in the Oval Office right now, who has their finger on the nuclear code and button. And our enemies are also are talking about our political, national, uh, geopolitical enemies are watching the same thing, Lord. And we just thank you, Father, for your supernatural defense system roundabout. I believe you've been orchestrating this whole thing, Lord, so you've got these things covered already before we pray. But we thank you, Father. We come in agreement with your plan that this will not be the destruction of the United States. This will not be an invasion of the United States, that our enemies will not see this as weakness and an opportunity to strike, but that, Lord, that you are, as we've already prayed, revealing, unveiling, and showing that these ones that thought they had the upper hand, these ones that thought they have deceived the masses, these ones that think they are untouchable and that they are covered and protected, Lord, as only you can do, you open the whole thing up and show that they've actually played right into your plan and into your hands. And so we thank you, God. We look to you. God, not to our military, not to the, the political or governmental realm, although I believe you anoint that, God, but we are looking and calling upon you, the justifier, the defender, the vindicator, the almighty God, that you have a plan for this nation and many other nations, that those that have uh, their 
you know, sights set on control and manipulation and, you know, just completely spitting in the face of God that you, God, you are untouched and unfazed. Nothing can tarnish, shadow, change anything about the truth of who you are and what you have designed. So, Lord, we look to you tonight. We place our hope and our trust in you tonight as much as we want all of this we want to see the parade the perp walk the whole thing exposed and those that have been manipulating in line we want to see them stand for and and answer for what they've done god we want that so bad but god more than that we want your will be done in this nation in our lives god we pray for the body of christ to wake up god we pray for the body of Christ to open their eyes, to stop turning a blind eye, to stop ignoring what's going on, and to stand in their position of authority and uh, um, proper place in this earth as as the ecclesia, God, the governing body of the of, of heaven's assignment, Father God. We ask you for all these things. They're all swirling at the same time. It gets overwhelming, God, but then we come come and we say we need you God you are the one you are the only one we put our trust in you we sit at your feet and we stand and sit in awe of you and your goodness and your greatness oh God and everything that is coming to pass in this moment in this time on the earth Lord by your grace, God, and by your mercy, we will fulfill all that you have assigned us to do. So we lay ourselves before you humbly, God, asking for that mantle, asking for the anointing, asking for the unction, asking to fill us, God, with what we need to do to speak in our sphere of influence, to speak truth, to speak rightly, to represent you correctly, Lord. Cleanse the church, God, of all the flesh of all the self-will, of all of it, God. And let us stand bare before you, perfectly content, God, to just be with you. And so we thank you for all that you are doing all at the same time, God. We feel overwhelmed, but we know you are not. We know this is playing out exactly as you need it to play out. And so, again, we trust you, God. We place our trust in you, Father. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you that our families are protected. We speak life over everything concerning us. We thank you, God, for the protection of everything that belongs to us. We thank you for health prosperity, safety of body, property. I'm messing it up, but you guys know the the drill about shalom and peace. I thank you, God, that we rest under your mantle of shalom right now in Jesus' name because of your amazing work you did on our behalf, Jesus. We don't take it for granted. We're grateful, ever grateful, God, but we invoke it in these moments. We invoke it because you gave it for this time. For these reasons. And so we thank you and praise you for it, Lord. To God be the glory in Jesus' name. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you that uh, uh, we have need of discernment right now. A a spirit of discernment to, um, to clearly understand and to clearly know exactly what you would have us pray for. How you would have us pray what you would have us decree or or declare in Jesus name. I thank you, Lord, that you reveal, you show us, you show us exactly how we should walk and exactly how we should speak and proclaim. Uh, Luke 12 says everything hidden and covered up will soon be exposed for the facade is falling down. I believe that and nothing will be kept secret for very long. And whatever has been spoken in private will be public knowledge. And whatever has been whispered secretly behind closed doors will be broadcast far and wide for all to hear. And I thank you, Father, that you have specific ones on assignment strategically placed 
in government positions, in the military, uh, in the FBI, in the CIA, in the, uh, all the branches of government, all the places you have strategically appointed and uh, placed them there. You've called them there. It's a heavenly calling. It's a glorious calling. And I thank you, Father, that you have also anointed them for their place and their position, but more importantly, for the time of their revealing and the time of them stepping forth. And Father, I just pray into that right now that, Lord, they will not be thwarted they will not be, uh, they will not be uh, cast aside or stopped in any way. They will not be um, uh, through, through demonic work. They will not be um, uh, sabotaged. That's the word I'm thinking of. I bind sabotage right now in Jesus' name. Every trap that is trying to be set by darkness will be exposed and come into the light before it ever has an opportunity. Uh, to be sprung or to to cause any trouble or damage in Jesus name. I thank you father for that divine intelligence at work that the angels are going forth and through knowledge and and discernment and uh, divine interpretation things are being known things are being seen things are being discovered uh, all kinds of strategies and issues uh, not only on the demonic side being exposed but on the heavenly side uh, having their perfect timing and their perfect unveiling and their perfect strategic working in Jesus name we pray that we decree that angels go forth and make it so, make it happen, bring it to pass, cause them to manifest and cause them to come into their rightful positions and timings and places in Jesus' name. Those who cannot be corrupted, those who will not be manipulated, Amen. right? In Jesus' name, those who will not through money or, or bribery or through blackmail be swayed in any way in Jesus' name. Those who have skin that is very thick, they have, they have been anointed for a time such as this. Just like President Trump, uh, things, attacks, fiery darts are thrown at him and they seemingly just bounce off of him. Oh, Father, you're raising up an army of men and women with the same toughness, the same um, the same suit of armor, I guess it is. I'm not sure. Heavenly armor to walk through, to wade through battle and, and to wade through the fire and not be burned. Thank you, Father, for their protection in Jesus' name. All those that you have called in the state positions, the state governments, and, and all of the influential positions in the state and the federal government in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for a heavenly work, for a glorious work in Jesus' name as you change. And then there was one more thing that I felt really impressed to pray on. I heard it said over the news, someone was saying, I think it was Christy Nome, was talking about um, the schemes and plans uh, of, of darkness, of the devil, uh, to do something like they did in 2020 again, to try to set up something that would become a national emergency where governors of states could just write their own pathway for the election and, and change all the laws for their election purposes um, and, and just, again, try to steal the election. And I feel we need to pray into that and disrupt that in the spirit, disrupt every plan, every every wrong thing, every high thing, every um, every uh, scheme, wicked scheme. The Bible calls it the wiles of the devil. Every wily scheme in Jesus' name. We just send angels forth right now. The host of heaven go forth and disrupt those national plans in Jesus' name. Disrupt this corrupt agenda. Disrupt and shut down and stop. Thwart this corrupt plan in Jesus' name. No, not a virus again. 
not a fake virus, not a false lied about virus again, or any other scheme or plan that is lied about and twisted. In Jesus' name, they will not pull it off. No, no. I call this 2016 again. I call this all over again. Uh, the free election, the fair election in our nation. Thank you, Father, for the apparatus. Thank you, Father, for the possibilities of things being exposed right now, even before they ever come to culmination. They're found out. They're stopped. They're exposed in Jesus' name. And they go into the light. They become, as it says in Luke, public knowledge. Thank you, Father, for the reporting. Father, I just pray right now for Tucker Carlson as he is taking an international stand right now, as he is taking a stand to speak the truth in, in spite of every threat, every demonic work, every witchcraft or warlock work against him to shut him up, to stop him. Father, we pray divine protection around him, all of his workers, all of his people, all of his network in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that he will be, he will be kept. He will be uh, not only safe, but he will be effective, safe and effective. That's what they said about this vaccine, which turned out not to be true. And we say Tucker is safe and effective in Jesus' name. His network and, and the truth network and the exposing of lies that is taking place in such a no-nonsense way. Oh, thank you, Lord. Uh, we just, Father, in fact, as a prayer group, as a church, we just, we just commit to pray for him, to cover him, and, and that not only would it fail against him, but it would propel him. It would launch him. It would ignite him like a rocket ship. Not just him personally to become a star, but a network uh, that supersedes CNN, that supersedes Fox, that, that becomes international in scope and has truth influence around the world in Jesus' name. I command the network of lies to fall apart. I command it to fall apart. And everyone, even over this thing with Joe Biden, I believe that there are going to be those commentators who are going to start to jump ship right now. They're going to say, I knew it all along. It was true. I, I could see it all along. They just wouldn't let me report on it. I thank you, Father, that it's the tide is turning in Jesus' name. And there's going to come from these channels and these networks and the news media completely a shift right now. I call it into manifestation. I call those things that be not as though they were a shift, a turnaround that's going to, uh, that's going to cover this nation and it's going to reverberate around the world. Anybody else want to join in? Sorry, I'm taking so much time, but just feel it so strong. Father, I want to pray into the church again. But what I'm seeing is that they have had their, their, the enemy has had his people out there for some time. It is time for the church to get out of the building and get into the cities and get into the neighborhoods and get into that which Johnny Enlow has been preaching for a while, to get into all these facilities. It is time for us. We did it tonight. We said all, all. It is time for the body of Christ to realize they are just that. I cry out, Father, for the revelation in the body that they are the body of Christ. The kingdom is in us. We are the ones responsible for the kingdom. We are the ones to walk it out. We are the ones to be available. Father, we're not saying we're going to do it of our own volition. What we're saying is directed by you, encouraged by your spirit. I've heard for years now, revival, revival, revival. Father, we've seen it, but we have not taken advantage of it. It must lead, as Dutch she's been saying, to reformation. It has always led to reformation, Father. Not to, to what is going to help, you know, bless us. and take. You've got us. You will take care of us. You will lead us. You will guide us. You will provide for everything you have planned in every life. If you will just Jesus. go 
where you say, put our hand up, our feet are out, whatever it may be. But I know, I know in my heart it starts here, right here, right here in Orange County. Orange County is very, very significant to the move of God. Yes. And for the city and the church to join ranks and make a difference. Father, I don't know how it's going to be done, but you've already started it. You've made connections within this body and all of them. But we've got to, I'm crying out for the leaders. I bless you and I thank you for your service and all that you've done. But wake up. You can't stay in the building and not get involved anymore. I can't. None of us can. When we know the truth, we are responsible for the truth. And it is God who is bringing us the truth. God, I cry out for the body of Christ, for an awakening like never before. I cry out, Father, you've been so good to us. And sometimes I think maybe I got a little too comfortable. But you've got a plan. And I know that this church is part of that plan. This county is part of that plan. Where a move starts, all the pieces are in place. Trellis is already here. There's a prayer movement forming. There's this. There's connections being made. But we're trying to figure out how to do something when God has the formula. Father, I cry out on my knees. We must follow you. We need your spirit. We need your direction. You will put it in front of us. You will make it obvious. You will place us. If we'll let go of everything we did tonight, you will position us. You will align us. You will anoint us. You will give us the wisdom we've asked for, the grace we need, and the, the, the provision to step out your plan. I break fear off the church in this county. I break, Father, that anxiety that says, how will I take care of my family? How will I, I, you know what? You don't know, but he has already made provision for it. I can say that. I've lived it. And it means that it's a change in our thinking. It's a change in our willingness to do whatever he says whenever. God, I know you provide for us, and I know that when we pray and you ask, you answer and you give. But tonight, I'm not asking for something for me. I'm asking for a move of God that has happened before to come again. There has been a revival. We, seen, we hear of Marlboro, so many going out and people getting saved and people being saved. And the problem is we then go back into our billions and we hide. I cry out, Father, for the uncovering of the church, that we don't hide anymore, that you embolden us, that you position us, that you align us individually, corporately, that you make the connections between the bodies, that we lay everything down but Jesus and the plan that he has right now for us. Whether we know it or not, the number is humongous. The problem is getting them all together with the mission. Holy Spirit, move upon the church again like never before. Move upon it like you did in Acts. You filled them with the Spirit. You connected them. You positioned them. You sent them out to do what you had planned to change the world. Without the Christians, Rome would have never fallen. You've got this plan. We submitted ourselves to it tonight. But I cry out for the church of God to bend their knee, Jesus. to open their hands, to raise their voice, Jesus. and to experience and receive the Thank power you. of God, Thank the you. spirit of God, yes. and the plan of God sure. for this time, this ages. It's always been those in the church that did the risk. And yet it changed the nation that you blessed. You put your handprint, you put your law, you put your grace into this nation, and it will not be wasted. Raise us up, awaken us as needed, reveal to us we don't have the plan. Please don't give it to us too early because we'll try to run with it. Step us into it and watch the power of God, the movement of God, and the, the plan of God. We will step into it because we will follow you in Jesus' name. Ram,
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? Praise God. Praise God. More, God, more. Your spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I had the idea to bring this tonight and read this, so if you'll bear with, just pray into it. It's, it's. I don't know how many of you follow uh, Deaf Sheets, Give Him 15, but this is part six of a series he's been doing the last several days about revival and reformation, exactly what Sherry was just praying. So I encourage you to read, if you are you a part of it, go back and read one through five, but he kind of sums them up here, and I don't even know if this is his last one for this series, but this is, this is what the Holy Spirit is doing right now, and so it's called Mary Had a Little Lamb today, that's what he named it, it's called, and he, uh, quotes Revelation 19, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse, and he who sat on it is called faithful and true and in righteousness. He judges and wages war. His eyes are a flame of fire, and on his head are many crowns, and he has a name written on him which no one knows except himself. He is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which are in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword, so that with with it he may strike down the nations and he will rule them with a rod of iron and he treads the winepress of the fierce wrath of God the Almighty and on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords and this is what Dutch says he says Mary had a little lamb this gentle lamb spoke words of comfort to outcast casts healed those who suffered gave of his time and energy to multitudes and forgave sinners his tender heart wept over the tomb of a friend over a city and in times of prayer. He allowed soldiers whom he created to mock him, spit on him, beat him mercilessly, and lead him quietly to, to his death on Calvary. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to slaughter and like a sheep that is silent before its shearers, so he did not open his mouth." But Jesus isn't the only meek, sacrificial lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He is also the lion of Judah. He fears nothing and no one. He created everything with only his words, and he keeps the universe operating in perfect order with just his words. While walking the earth, he also walked on water and through walls. Storms obeyed his commands. He turned water into wine and multiplied by thousands a few fish and loaves of bread. He, his spit healed blood blind eyes, and his touch cured leprosy. He raised the dead and reversed ins insanity. Demons fled from him, shrieking in fear. When their creator willingly died, the sun refused to shine, and the earth shook. Death, of course, couldn't hold him, and his resurrection was so powerful, it spilled over onto other dead people, raising them from the dead." Once back in heaven, he reclothed himself in glory. His eyes are like fire, his voice is like a waterfall, and when appropriate, his words become a sharp sword with which he strikes down nations. Fire also goes before him and consumes his enemies. In righteousness, he judges and makes war with the armies of heaven following him. Angels worship him. Rulers cast their crowns at his feet. He is king of kings and lord of lords. It behooves us as humans to know which Jesus we're dealing with, the Savior or the King, the Lion or the Lamb, the Mediator or the Judge. Mary's little lamb who loves sinners and wants to save them has been known to don his kingly robe and send an angel to kill an earthly king. And that was on this side of the cross found in Acts 12. The great shepherd, Pastor Jesus, laid down his shepherd's staff and picked up his sword, striking down two people, defiling the early church at its inception, Acts chapter 5. On one occasion, Savior Jesus determined that his warrior mantle was needed and struck a man with blindness for opposing the gospel. That's Acts 13. Am I saying that God likes to hurt people or rain down judgment? Absolutely not. In numerous posts, I have said that God takes no pleasure in 
the judgment of the wicked. But neither am I saying that he never judges the wicked. God knows when grace and mercy are possible and he knows when judgment is necessary and his judgments are true and righteous altogether. We have been discussing revival and reformation. Savior Jesus, the Lamb of God, is going to pour out his spirit on earth in unprecedented measure, saving a billion or more people in this season. And Lord Jesus, the Lion of Judah, is going to disciple nations, reforming them to his precepts and laws. In the Great Commission of Matthew 28, he stated that he had been given all authority, not just in heaven, but also on earth. This is King Jesus speaking. He then said, go and disciple the nations, quote, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. Notice that he did not invite them to honor his teachings. He commanded them. Let's remember in this revival and reformation that Jesus is Savior and Redeemer, but also that he is Lord, Master, and King. He is our high priest offering grace and mercy. He is the lawgiver demanding truth and justice. He is the lamb, kind and gentle. He is also the lion, strong and fierce. He's the servant of all, yet he is the general of heaven's army. He is our husband, but also our bishop, our provider, but also our creator, our friend, but also our captain, a healer, but also a warrior. He is the son of man, and he is the son of God. This incredible God-man is about to make his presence known on earth in dramatic ways. The Savior is coming with his redeeming grace, and the king is coming to expand his kingdom. Keep your lamps burning brightly. He says, pray with me. Father, we thank you for Jesus, for who he is and what he has done. We thank you for his humanity and his deity. We thank you for his perfect love and perfect justice. We thank you for your plans that are unfolding. Thank you for the way in which you orchestrate events and even in perilous and difficult times, navigate through them to bring about great spiritual harvests on earth. We ask for a release of your saving power and your righteous judgments. We ask you to end the reign and terror of the Prince of Persia in the Middle East and for millions of souls to come to you in that region. We ask you to stay the hands of evil leaders in China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, and elsewhere, keeping them from actions that would hinder revival and reformation. We ask for you to stay the hands of evil in America, the rule of leaders who sl allow modern day slavery, the tra trafficking of humans through Mexico in order to gain votes in the future. Their lust for power and control has seared their consciences. Judge the hideous evil. Expose it. Remove those who shamelessly partner with it. Rain revival on our churches, our campuses, our cities, and our homes. We bind the strong man, Baal, in America, decreeing that he will not maintain his hold on this nation. We declare that the blood of Jesus is cleansing our nation and that you will send the revival we need. You will answer by fire, just as you did for Elijah, and send the rain. We ask for and receive these things by faith in the holy name of Jesus. And our decree is that we decree the earth's creator, owner, and redeemer is coming to revive and reform. Yes. Amen. Anybody else? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs 26, 26 says, Through hate, though hatred is concealed by deception... Wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. I'll read it again. 2626. Though hatred is concealed by deception, wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. Thank you, Father. Expose it, Lord. Expose the wickedness. Let it be shown, let it be known. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed.
Father, I just come to you in the name of Jesus, and I just lift up all the churches in Orange County, God, all the churches in this area, Father. And I pray, Lord God, that a holy, reverent fear of the Lord would fall upon your people in this hour, Lord God. Father, so many of your people are walking in darkness, God. They're walking in darkness because they don't read your word and they don't understand your word and they don't have relationship with you, Father. I pray, Lord God, that you would begin to visit them, Father, upon their bed, Lord, that there would be Damascus Road experiences, God, even for believers, Lord, that have been walking with you for so long, God, but they don't know who you are, Father. They don't know who you are, God. And there's so many leaders, there's so many pastors, God, that, that are doing what their people want them to do, God, instead of what you want them to do, Lord. I pray, Father, that our eyes would be turned to you, Lord God, for you are the author and the finisher of our faith, Lord, and you will redeem everything in our lives, God, and you will break off everything that is not of you, Father. And I just pray pray for freedom for your people, Lord. I pray for freedom, God, from every religious spirit, Lord, every weight and every hindrance, Lord God, that keeps them from worshiping you, that keeps them from praying, God, that keeps them from reading your word, oh God. I pray, Father, that we would have revelation when we open your word, God, that life would come to us, God, and death I pray that you deliver your people from dead works, God. I pray, Lord God, that they would fall on their face and they would worship you, Lord, that they would hunger and thirst after you, Father God. It's only you, Jesus. Jesus, come alive in your people. Come alive in these these buildings that we call churches, God. We have labels on these buildings that are not of you, Father. Forgive us, oh God. Forgive us, Father, for drawing people into ourselves and not lifting you up, God, that you might draw all men to yourself, Father, in Jesus' name. And I pray, Father, that you do a work of unity in the body of Christ, a work of unity in Orange County, a work of unity, God, in these churches here, Lord, that pride would fall. God, I break pride over pastors and over priests and over every man that stands in the pulpit and wants to wants to be somebody. God, we're nobody, Father. We're nobody without you, God. Oh, God, I pray that repentance would come, Father. Let a spirit of repentance fall on your people, Lord. Let it start at the top, God, and trickle all the way down, Father. I pray, Lord God, that, that your leaders, God, would humble themselves, God, that they would humble themselves before their congregations, Lord, that they would repent, Father, of not leading people to you, O oh God, of not seeking after the things that you've given us, not using the tools that you've given us, O oh God. In Jesus' name, I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you, God, that you are calling us to stand together shoulder to shoulder, Father, in unity, God, in unity, Father, not needing to be seen, not needing to be known, not needing to have a position or a title, God, but just humbling ourselves before you, God, just humbling ourselves, Lord. Let the fear of the Lord fall upon your people, O oh God. Oh, thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Yes. Yes, Lord. Father, your church is so important, so important in this time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. You said you're the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Don't let your church be hidden in this hour. Let it be the light. We are children of the light. 
We are born of the light. We are the light of the world. It's what you said. Jesus, going into the temple, you began throwing out everyone who had set up shop, selling everything and anything. And you said, it is written in scripture, my house shall be a house of prayer. And you have turned it into a religious bazaar. Lord, I command the religious bazaar to be thrown out, to be shut down. The den of robbers, other translations say the den of thieves. In Jesus' name, just what man wanted it to be. Men and women took over the house of God. We command that to fall apart. We command it to be shut down in Jesus' name. We say go back to the original plan. Go back to the original calling. Go back to the scripture, a house of prayer. My house will be called a house of prayer. Thank you, Father, in raising up, turning around, shifting, turning the tide changing the course in the direction of the church to become a house of prayer, a place of relationship, a, pray, a place that covers, a place that blesses, a place that brings healing, a, pray, a place of deliverance, a place of restoration, a, a place of relationship. Oh God, oh God, change the course of the churches in Costa Mesa, of the churches in Orange County, of the church in California, of the churches around this nation and around the world, God. Hunger for prayer, a cultivation of prayer, a culture of prayer, worship and prayer, a heart of worship, a heart after you, like you said of David, he was a man after my heart. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. Let the wind blow in the church. Let the winds of the Spirit blow in the church. Let the fire, let the candle burn in the church. Father, don't let it go out. Don't let it be blown out. Don't let deception take over. Don't let... Leaders who are just about themselves lead the churches. It's time for the shift, God. Oh, Father, thank you, Lord. We say, we, we pray for those churches where Ichabod has been written over them in Jesus' name. Oh, God, raise them up again. Give them a fresh start. Like the church in Philadelphia, the revelation that you speak of. <laughs> yeah, relationship hard after you. You have a little strength and you know my name. Oh God, Father, let it be new song. Let new song be in that place where we're after you. Our heart is after you. Our mission is your commission. Our heart is your plan. God, we gather to worship, we gather to pray, and we want to know what you want us to do. Lead us in this next season. Show us the way. Light up the way. Give us clear instruction. Give us clear direction. Make it plain. Make our way plain. Thank you, Lord. You always have in 25 years. Yesterday, we celebrated 25 years as a church. Oh, God, show us the next, the next phase. Show us the next place. Show us the next plan. Show us what to do. It's been hard, God. It's been difficult. Show us what to do. We're going to follow you. We will not quit. We will not let go. We're going to follow hard after you. Our heart follows hard after you, God. Thank you, Father. You've got people for us. You've got a plan for us. You've got those who are like-hearted and like-minded. Thank you, Lord. 
intercessors. It's like Rose who just prayed, intercessors coming. Those who have a heart after prayer, those who know the power of prayer, those who know the importance of prayer. God, connect us, unite us, plant us, reveal and show in Jesus' name. Oh, God, in Jesus' name. Yes, more, God, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Father, I pray for Costa Mesa, for Orange County, for Dave and Michelle, for Charles. For, it doesn't matter. What I'm praying, Father, new blueprints. Yes, yes. We need new blueprints. We need your voice. We need you to direct our steps. We need you to provide the plan. Not this time, Father, it's different. This is not. Orange County, Father. Orange County. We're going to take Orange County, not for us, but for you. We're going to take it with the love of God in our hearts. We're going to take it with the plan of God in our, in our, in our souls. We're going to take it with our feet prepared to walk it out with you. And, 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 you know, we don't even know what it looks like, but I know what it's like when God leads, it works. It always works. It's scary. And you don't know where you're going or what you're doing sometimes. We need your blueprint. I just, I get it. We're all trying to figure out how do we make a prayer bearing happen? How do we do this? How do we do that? We need the move of God, the power of God to fall on us and on others around us. We will seek his heart. Father, we need you. Oh, Holy Spirit, we need you. We need you not just to anoint us. We need you to live in us, to speak through us, to pray through us, to move among the city in our midst, Father. Uh, Father, the walls must fall. The walls must fall. No more judgment. Let it go. Let it go. No more. The walls have to come down. The walls have to come down. Father, raise up Ian even farther. Make him known countywide. Bring up more Ians. More Ians, Father. Those who have nothing but a vision for God's work to be done. God's people to touch their neighborhoods, change their cities. This is kingdom work. I don't know what it looks like. But I cry out for the leaders in Orange County. I cry out for their hearts to be tender and open. I cry out for their minds to be ready to receive revelation to come that they won't grab hold of and try to figure out how to do. We need the power of God, the move of God. That's where the awakening is. It's in that. Awaken us and bring reformation to our county, Lord, and to our state. Much is going on in the spirit. Much is going on with this civil war thing that's going on right now in this nation. There may be splits, there may be divisions, but we can take cities. We can make a difference, and we're not taking it for us. We're asking you to empower us, position us, give us your plan at the right time, the right place, and let the power of God be fully evident in the midst of it, in Jesus' name. Kathy had up on the TV sets. It was uh, it was the wheat, and it reminded me of the scripture that says, "Unless um, a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it will be just a grain of wheat." And I, I w so what does that mean for us as? ordinary people, people who love the Lord and want to follow him. We, that's what it comes back to. We need to s submit our, ourselves, our plans, our dreams to the foot of the cross because God is calling. 
Now, we don't ha may not have a plan yet, but we need, we know who the leader is. And I know that when it's him that's leading, everything else falls into place. And we all have a purpose in that plan. But Lord, I pray for the eyes to see, the ears to hear, and the heart, yes, the hearts to receive and to follow you. Help us, Lord, because our calendars are full. But we need to, at times, to things to let go of. And, and I believe, God, that you will show us what needs to go and what we need to take on so that we would be um, your servant. Your servant. That's what all we really want, Lord. We want to follow you, and we want to do what you would have us do, because then we are happy, then we thrive. And what could be better than being part of God's plan in what he wants done, in Jesus' name. Father God, I just ask you to forgive our, our churches around this world, but especially in this country. It just, it reminds me so much, God, because I've been to so many of them, and it reminds me of the church of Ephesus. God, you say, I see the great works that you've done. You fed the hungry, you took care of the widows and clothed the naked. But you did something else. You turned away from your first love. And Father God, I see that in churches today all over this country. Pastors have become administrators. Missionaries have become a, well, look, I got another notch on the Bible. Evangelists is blow and show. We come in real quick, make a big splash, and make a mess. Youth pastors have become the guy standing in the spotlight. Children pastors have become babysitters. God, this isn't what you want. Jesus, you, you said to go into the whole world and make disciples of all men. Not to judge them, not to put them up on a pedestal, not to kick them to the curb but to disciple them. And somehow the other, and I'm not saying this about all the churches, God, you know that, but God, there's so many churches that have, they've lost their first love. They forgot what it's like to look a child in the eye who gives his life to Jesus. And feel that love coming from you, Lord God, for that child. I'll see a teenage girl who's pregnant, and they don't judge, but instead they put their arms around her and said, we love you because Jesus loves you. And they feel what Jesus feels. We forget sometimes what a pastor is like when he stands in front of a congregation. You have this pastor that says, show me the spotlight. Here I am. God, there's so many pastors who have forgot what it feels like to stand in front of a flock, their flock, that you gave to them, and to look upon their flock and say, thank you, God, for this responsibility. Thank you for this love that I feel right now. And I know there's someone over there that's asleep in the pew. I know there's someone writing notes. And I know there's someone that's sitting there and they're going to call me tomorrow on my day off and say what a lousy job I did. But I still love them, Lord. That's the love of God. That's what the churches need, Lord. The love of God once again. Pastor Dave knows what I'm talking about. There's so many other pastors that know what I'm talking about. Oh God, help us to come back. Help us to come back to our first love. Help us to come back 
so that we don't judge someone who's demon-possessed, but instead we set them free. Father God, help us to not judge that boy or girl who has become so confused because of things in this world that we don't judge them, but we put our arms around them and love them just the way they are and try to disciple them in the name of Jesus. Father God, for your name's sake, God, not for ours. God, we don't want another notch in our Bible. We don't want another notch in our pulpit, God. Lord, we want people to have bent knees before you. We want people to come to you with that same love and adoration, Father God, that Jesus Christ himself showed on the cross. That kind of love. That's what I pray for, God. That's what I pray for in the church, Lord God. I believe that if the church, God, and I really believe this, Lord God, if the churches would just come back to their first love and pray with the authority and the love and the adoration of our Lord Jesus Christ, that this country would be won back again and the gates of hell will not prevail. But God, you called your church to take a stand. You didn't tell us to run. You told us to take a stand. Show us how to take a stand in love. But show us, God, how to not back down. God, even your word says to take the plows and to melt them and turn them into swords. It's time for a battle, God. But Father God, we want Jesus to lead us. If he doesn't go before us, God, then we don't deserve this nation. If we can't give this nation back to you, Father God, then we don't deserve it. So God, help us as believers and the love of our Father and everything that Jesus went through for us. Let us call upon his name with absolute authority, absolute faith, and knowing that what we pray is according to your will and to your perfect plan, and we shall see it come to fruition. Yes. And we thank you, Father God, yes. in your most holy name. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Father, for leading us tonight, orchestrating our prayers in, even in our passion and our hunger. Holy Spirit, I, I just know you take hold and you orchestrate what we are saying and praying. Uh, your word says that the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of righteous men and women makes tremendous power available. And it's dynamic in its working. I thank you, Father, for the releasing of spiritual anointed Holy Ghost power as we prayed tonight and for it to be effective. Yes. That, that it's not just words thrown in the atmosphere, but it is creative power. Yes. It is delivering power, yes. healing and restorative power at work. And we have confidence in that tonight. And we, together we just Thank you, Father, for the privilege and honor uh, to step in this place through faith, believing, and then also to see the results, to hear of the results, to, uh, to be part of the testimonies that, re that come. We thank you for it tonight. I just pray for protection. Uh, uh, all on our lives and our households and our possessions, the things you've given us and the people that are with us in Jesus' name. And no evil will befall. No harm will come near in Jesus' name. No plague near our dwelling place in Jesus' name. We just honor you for it. And we're, we're just so thankful and grateful in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good work, you guys. Good prayer. Powerful. Have a great evening. Drive safe home. Who knows? It could rain while you're driving home. It's been like on and off all day, hasn't it? Is your boat fixed? Is it done? The boat.
The what? The boat? <laughs> I've been paddling all day. <laughs> I need a motor on it. <laughs> <laughs>